Hello. Do you or your loved ones have trouble getting it up? No matter what you do, you just don't have that spark you need. Well, you're not alone. Today, we're talking about LGD. LGD, or limp grass disorder, is an affliction suffered by thousands of hobbyists from around the globe. Luckily, our friends, the scientists at the National Institute of Cool Sh**, developed a tool for this very specific problem. Introducing the static grass applicator made from Trash 3000. This tool will keep your grass standing tall, onlookers and observers feeling happy and satisfied. Even better, I'm going to show you how to make one of these bad boys. I was able to make this build from items that I had laying around the house. The only thing I had to purchase was a negative ion generator from Amazon for around 22 bucks. You may not have exactly what I do in this video, but get creative. I think you can find most of what you need just laying around. The static grass applicator I'm building is made up of six main components. A power source, a switch, a negative ion generator, a handle, a grass chamber, and a wire mesh. The only thing I wound up having to buy was a negative ion generator, which I'll link down in the description below. I'm using this old cable modem power pack for a power source. The output is 12 volt and 1 amp DC. If you're pretty close to that, you should be just fine. For a handle, I'm using an old seasoning bottle. Just give that a quick rinse and make sure it's nice and dry. For the grass chamber, I'm using an old egg drop soup container. Mmm, soup. We need some wire mesh, so I'm just gonna pull it out of this old sifter that I found. The last real component we need is a switch, and I pulled this one out of an old flashlight I had. Here's a diagram of the full assembly. Let me show you how I put all this stuff together. Your negative ion generator should have three wires coming out of it. Two red, which are your positive, and one black, which is your negative. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove a little bit of the shielding on the black wire and uh, attach an extension of sorts that will act as our probe for the final product. I'm soldering about a three foot piece of uh, stranded wire onto this original ground coming from the negative ion generator. And be sure and slide a piece of heat shrink over that just so you don't have any exposed wire and it helps uh, strengthen the joint there. If you don't have a soldering iron, you could probably get away with just wrapping the wire around it really tight, but that solder forms a really nice joint that's going to give you durability and an overall better connection. If you're new to soldering, I recommend just picking up a cheap iron from a, maybe a local hardware store. I think you can get one like this from Harbor Freight for about five bucks. If you don't have heat shrink, maybe just use some electrical tape to wrap around there. So at this phase, you should have something that looks like this. Next, we're gonna prepare our power supply. I'm going to start by clipping off the small plug on my power adapter. I'll then peel the two wires apart and strip the coating of each wire back about a half an inch. And this should go without saying, but make sure you never work on anything electrical while it's plugged in. Next, I'm gonna put a little solder on the end of each of these wires just to make our solder job a little easier down the road. Uh, for you newbies to soldering, this is called tinning a wire. Okay, here's where we're at so far. If you'll notice on the power supply, the two wires coming from there will probably be black, but one of them will have some white dashes on it. The one with the white dashes is actually your positive, so just be sure and keep your positive and negative straight. Time to prepare our handle. We're going to take our seasoning bottle and remove the lid. Remove this. Okay, that thing just wanted out of there, I guess. We're going to use the lid later, so hold on to that. I'm now going to take the switch and make a rough sketching on the bottle. This will give me an idea where I need to cut out. I'm just going to use a sharp razor blade to do this cutting. Uh, and it's better to do a lot of thin little light cuts than one heavy one. The stiffer plastic tends to crack if you put too much pressure on it. So just be careful. 
Now just test fit your switch, make sure it fits. If not, you can just scrape a little of the plastic out along the edges there. It just needs a nice snug fit. Looking good. And shame on me, I forgot to record this, but I drilled a small eighth inch hole in the bottom of the seasoning container, as you can see here. Next, drill another small hole below the switch hole that we cut earlier. Now we're gonna take the two wires from the power supply and stick them in the hole in the bottom of the container. We're gonna route these out of the hole that we cut for the switch earlier. Be sure and pull yourself plenty of slack the handle's pretty large, so we've got room to store extra wire. It'll make it easier working on this later. Next, we're gonna take our negative ion generator and the side that has two leads on it. We're gonna put the red and black wire through the mouth of the seasoning bottle and out of the hole that we cut for the switch earlier. So out of that switch hole, we're gonna have the positive and negative from the ion generator and also the positive and negative from our power supply. Next, take that extra lead that we soldered onto the ground wire and stick it through the small hole we drilled below the switch. Just pull all that extra wire slack out there too. Next, we can stuff the negative ion generator inside the handle itself. We should have plenty of room inside the handle to stuff all this extra wire. I'm also going to take that probe wire and wrap it around the handle just to get it out of the way. Here's a little diagram of how everything should be routed right now. I know we don't have much connected so it can get a little confusing. So just again, pay attention to your positive and negative wires. Time to make some connections. Take the two ground wires that are coming out of your switch hole that we cut and twist those together. Now this twist will probably be just fine if you don't have a soldering iron, but I'm going to solder them and put some heat shrink over them just to be safe. Once you get it how you want it, just stuff it back inside that handle there and out of the way. Be sure and cover up any bare connections you see as you don't want any short circuits. Let's wire up our switch now. I'm gonna connect the positive from the negative ion generator to the middle terminal and the positive from our power supply to the top terminal. I'm gonna solder these in place, but if you don't have a soldering iron, they make lots of different types of crimp connectors, so just look around and do what's easiest and best for you. I put some heat shrink on these wires before I soldered them, so I'm just going to slide that into place and apply a little heat to shrink that fit up tight. It's time now to fit our switch into place, stuff all those extra wires in the hole, and orient the switch in a way where the off and on is in your preferred position. I made mine where I flick it up to turn it on, just like a light switch so it's easy for me to remember. Okay, we're doing great so far. Next step is to make our grass chamber, so let's go with it. For the grass chamber, I'm using this soup container. I'm going to take that seasoning bottle that we've got kind of wired up and put it on the bottom of this soup container and trace it. Luckily, it just happens to be the same size as the inner ring here. So with a nice sharp razor blade, I'm just going to cut some thin lines into the bottom making wedges like a pizza. I'll then go around the edge of the circle and pop these pieces out. While you're making your cuts, just be extra careful. The bottom of these bowls can be surprisingly brittle. I got a few cracks, but I don't think they're gonna affect the performance too much. Now, if your hole's pretty close to the right size, you should be able just to screw in that seasoning bottle straight into the bottom of the container. Just give her a couple of twists and it'll go right in. Next thing to do is drill a small hole in the top of that seasoning container lid and feed the last positive wire from that negative ion generator through that hole and tighten the lid up on the seasoning bottle. This will also help keep the grass chamber in place. I'm salvaging the wire mesh for this build from the bottom of an old flour sifter. 
It's been in my cabinet for years now, and I think I maybe used it one time. So, time to repurpose for better things. No real strategy here, I'm just kind of cavemanning it out of this piece. But it turned out just fine. There's a hole in the middle, but I'll just cover that up with some tape later. The mesh wire is going to act as sort of a strainer and also give a negative charge to our static grass, so we have to cut a hole out of the lid of the soup container. Luckily, on the lid itself, there's a line that's almost exactly the same size as my mesh strainer. So I'm just going to use that as a guide and cut maybe within half an inch of that line and see how that fits up. We need a small overlap of the mesh and the lid just so we have a way to attach it. You can see as I dry fit it here, I've got a little more overlap than I need. So I'm just going to trim out some more plastic and dry fit again. Much better. Still gives me enough room to attach it, but also plenty of surface area for shaking grass. I'm just using a high temp hot glue gun to attach this to the lid. It'll be plenty strong for what we need. I'm going to flip the lid over and put glue on the other side as well. Okay, there's the lid done and really the last main component of this build. So we should have one bare wire left, which is the positive side of that negative ion generator. I've got the wires kind of splayed out here just to help make a better connection and hold the lid in place while I solder it. I'm just feeding them through the lid here and twisting them back around. Sometimes these wire mesh pieces or anything aluminum oxidizes really quickly when you solder and makes a not so great connection. So I'm using some soldering compound to help make that go a little smoother. Don't breathe this. All right, once you get that soldered in place, just pop the lid on and we'll move on to the very final step. The last thing to do besides a little cleanup is to prepare the negative probe coming out of your handle. You use this to touch to the workpiece that you're applying the static grass to. I'm just going to strip back about an inch of the coating here and leave these stranded wires kind of loosely apart. Next, take about a two inch piece of paper clip or stiff wire and kind of insert it into the middle of these wires and into the shielding. You want about an inch and a half of this stiffer wire sticking out. Twist the stranded wire around the stiffer wire and solder it in place. Again, if you don't have a soldering iron, you could probably get away with some tight electrical tape or even some hot glue here. Boom! And just like that, you've got yourself a budget static grass applicator. Okay, before we turn on this high voltage death machine, let's check our diagram one more time. Is everything looking good to you? Me too. Alright, let's give it a whirl. With the device unplugged and the switch turned off, I'm going to pop the lid off here and load up some static grass. For this demonstration, I'm using some 4 mil static grass from Woodland Scenics. Put your lid back on tight, and it's time to prepare our workpiece. Here I've got a little blue insulation foam rock uh, with some real short grass already glued to it. What I'm putting down here is a mixture of matte Mod Podge and water. And I'm just going to coat that in all the areas where I want my static grass to be applied. Be generous with this, it's watered down pretty heavily and it dries matte, so not many negative effects by adding a little extra. With the device still switched off, we're going to plug the probe that's coming out of the handle into the blue foam straight into the glue. The liquid glue acts as a conductor for this process. With the applicator now plugged into an outlet, switch the device on and make slow sweeping passes over your terrain piece. You'll notice the static grass seemingly shooting straight out of the grass chamber. You have to hold the applicator within a few inches of the terrain piece, so don't be afraid to get in there close. It might look like a mangy dog at first, so don't be afraid to make several applications. All in all, this grass applicator cost me around $25 in parts, and I couldn't be happier with the results. If you learned something from this video or even found it interesting, I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Be kind to one another, 
and I'll catch you next time.